Hello everybody, it's Tony here from Phono Stage Audio. And I'm coming to you from a different angle today. Uh, I've done uh, plenty of reviewing lately, I've got plenty more to do, and I've got some uh, I've got a guided tour that I'd like to take you on. And I'm going on a little road trip at some point, which I'm going to share with you. Um, but uh, today, from the Phono Stage Audio YouTube channel, I'm going to talk to you about my 10 hi-fi rules you should definitely stick to. Definitely stick to. Now, um, why am I doing this? I'm doing this because there's loads of stuff out there. There's lots of useful guides and information, and this is better than this, is better than this, is better than this, and you shouldn't do this, and you shouldn't put that there, and all sorts of things. And we love reading it, and we love reading reviews, and we love absorbing all this stuff. And it's very easy to get a fixed view of what you like, um, what you're going to do next, um, what you think is the correct thing about hi-fi or listening or the best music. And no matter how you can possess that as much as you want, you can own it and you can broadcast it. But I can guarantee you that as you go through life, all that will change. All that will change. Um, what you, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that in the 10 um, things you should definitely stick to. All that will change what you think is the best music, what you think is the best type of speaker, what you think is the best, um, I don't know, turntable, whatever it is, whatever it is, um, what style of music you listen to, it's all subject to change. Your ears are going to change, your um, domestic situation is going to change, your financial situation is going to change, um, who influences you, your peer support, what your buddies get into, is all going to change and that will influence what you do. So um, I'm, I'm inviting you not to have any fixed views about anything, not to possess anything too much. But in the middle of all that, there is a golden thread that runs through the middle of it, which I think are sort of some, some, general, some general rules and some general advice that's worth sticking to that help to make the whole thing a little bit more uh, understandable. Okay, and the things that I think that I have learned, common denominators that have come to me over maybe a 40 odd year period have been obsessed in different ways at different times with hi-fi equipment. So this is Phono Stage Audio. Please stick with us on this. There's some interesting things coming up and I'm inviting you to like and subscribe. Uh, get notified of future things coming up. You already know about some of these things if you've been watching us. I do do requests but no singing and dancing. Thank you very much. So with no further ado, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna talk you through this. Uh, I'm gonna start from the top. There are 10 of these, but uh, actually it's probably 11 because number six repeats twice and there's no way I was gonna write this out again, okay? It was just, it was, it flowed out of me like inspiration, okay? So take it from the top. I'll use the glasses if I need them, right? The, my writing here is a combination of tiny, uh, massive, underlined, scribbled out, written sideways. Oh, forget it, honestly. So, they need to go on. Right, okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna start with a really simple one. I'm gonna start with a really simple one, all right? And this goes back to when I used to walk the dog, Gibson, Arnie. Well, I still do walk the dog. One of them's over there asleep. But where I used to walk, I used to walk around the block near us. And you know, when you're going down in the winter and you look, you can see through everybody's front windows at night, which is great, you know. And then um, there was one house that I used to go through. And for years it was the same. And I used to look in as I was walking past and it was lit up and yeah. You know, and the, there was a sideboard in there. You know, you could see it was near the window, you know, well, going up the side of the thing near the window. And they had a, like a kind of a, I don't know, like a system here, like a MIDI system type thing. And then they had the two speakers. All right. This hopefully will gall you as much as it galled me. They had the two speakers like this, one on top of the other. And I used to walk past, I think they might have been turned in slightly towards the, you know, towards the room. And I used to look at that, and there was room to put the speakers, in, you know, one, one at either side. And I used to look at that, you know, and that, that, really used to, that really used to seize my bearings, that did. I didn't like that at all. 
You know, every time I used to walk past, I had a slightly queasy, uncomfortable feeling. I wanted to sort of knock on the door and give them some advice, which would have probably just got me battered, really. So, um, so that is the first rule. What is the point of that? That is like going out and not buying a stereo. You're going out and buying a mono. I just don't get it anyway. So there you go. That was my first one. I've had to get that out of my system. I've been carrying that around with me for a long time. Um, the second one, okay, is pretty straightforward. And this kind of relates to this as well. I don't remember if this system here had a record deck on it, but let's pretend, okay, that it does have a record deck on it. All right, that's a record deck. Right? Don't put your speakers on the same surface as your record deck. This is irrespective of what you're into, what you do. If you can avoid doing this, at all costs avoid doing it, okay? Because the, the record deck picks up vibrations from the record. This is quite fundamental. You, you probably know this. The record deck picks up the vibrations, right? The needle picks up vibrations, right, from the record deck, or it vibrates, pick it up the undulations in the groove, okay? It's essentially, it's a vibration detection device, right? And then that then plays music through the speakers, which vibrate, and they vibrate the cupboard that it's sat on, which feeds back up to the record deck, vibrates the disc. It's picked up by the stylus, by the needle, okay? Which in turn makes a sound, vibrates the speakers, which vibrates the cupboard, which vibrates the hi-fi system and the turntable, picks up that vibration sound and recirculates it and recirculates it and recirculates it and sort of sucks the life out of your sound. It's hard to explain exactly what it does. It cancels out certain frequencies. It can, in extreme circumstances, at loud volumes cause like a kind of a bass feedback swell, which will just knacker everything up. But at low levels, um, it definitely takes something out of the music. You know, it's more, you might not hear it in its own right, you will hear what it's doing. Uh, okay, so it's just, it's a, it's a general untightness and, 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 and nastiness. So don't do that and don't do this. Don't do any of that stuff, right? Just, just a minute. Just don't do it. That is a definite rule. Okay, now, there you go. Next one. This is one for, uh, ho I'm hoping to upset a few people here. Don't listen to snake oil and snake oil dissenters. Now, what do we mean by that, right? Okay, so there's a lot of people out there, you know, they're very quick. So if I, if I get on, I don't know, if I go on my Facebook page and I say, oh, I've got these new cables in, you know, they're absolutely fantastic. I've been listening to them. They're this and this and this, and they might be absolutely gorgeous, you know. Um, there's always going to be some dissenters that get on there. Underneath the comments, I don't, I don't say anything about a cable because it attracts dissenters and keyboard warriors. Oh, da, 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 snake oil, you're better off using a bit of bell wire. It makes no difference. Don't believe the hype. Oh, this guy's trying to rip you off. And all that kind of stuff. Well, one thing I have learned, okay, and this is true, and you can come down here and have a listen, right, is that this sounds better than this, okay? And that this... Sounds better than a bit of that bell wire that everybody keeps telling me about. Absolutely. But what I don't believe is I don't believe the hype. I don't believe the hype. I don't believe all the stuff that I read about the, I don't know, the dialectic amorphous mass of the whatever it is, as it travels in the direction of the sun at three o'clock on a Wednesday, 4.27 millimeters above the ground, it will sound better. Or if you buy this little rubber thing made from a plant that only grows in Azerbaijan in September every fourth year and you stick it to your nose when you're listening, it enhances your listening experience. There's a lot of, there's a lot of bull out there, isn't there? There's a lot of snake oil out there, okay? But that doesn't mean, that doesn't detract from some general truths that that sounds better than that. So, when you start being a snake oil dissenter, what you're actually doing is something that you're really discouraged from doing in lots of other avenues of life. And that is generalizing about groups of things or groups. 
It's about saying they're all the same. It's completely removing any individuality or any objectivity about it. You've made a subjective decision that there's no such thing as improvements or whatever it is. You know, that, uh, that anybody who says this cable's better than this cable is the same as the person that says that, you know, if you sprinkle moon dust on your high fi at three o'clock on a Wednesday, you know, it's going to sound so much better. And, uh, you know, like what this cable did when such a body connected it, you know, after, I don't know, putting one of these on nearly broke the internet, right? That's how people speak these days. So yeah, there's a lot of bullshit out there. Okay, I don't mind saying it. Um, but the fundamental truths remain, okay? Good engineering, good materials, it's good physics, it's good electronics, it makes a difference. It's as simple as that. And if you don't believe me, if you don't believe me, go to a hi-fi shop and just say, I have got some rubbish cable here. I just like to compare it to some nice cables and get into a good listening environment and have a listen. Don't believe the snake oil. Some of the stuff that we have here, you know, if you read the list of, I don't know, technical, I don't know, if you read how it was constructed and what the company is saying about it, you would think, what are they on about? Not all of it, just some things. You don't have to really listen to all that because often it doesn't make a great deal of sense. But it does matter if it sounds better and if you can afford it and if you're comfortable paying for it. That does matter. So don't believe the snake oil. Don't believe the snake oil dissenters. That is a definite rule. Okay, number four. Don't leave your, lead, you, lead your life by the reviews. Don't lead your life by the reviews. Now, reviews are fun and they're useful and they have a place, okay? Um, it definitely does. It's very informative. It's very interesting. It's better than watching certain stuff on the telly that some people attach themselves to three times a week, half past seven. I love watching reviews and I like making reviews and I love reviewing stuff. Because when I listen to stuff and I really get into it or I really get a feel for it, it's like I really want to be able to kind of convey that and articulate it to other people. Um, but just because I think it doesn't make it right. I'm not trying to shoot myself in the foot here, okay? Um, and it's the same for everybody. It's a very subjective business. The reviewers, wonderful as they are, including myself in this, reviewers, they don't have your house and they don't have your ears and they don't have your they don't have your head remember that your head is part of the synergy of everything that goes on with equipment you know i've had people down here demonstrations of stuff and it's pretty obvious to me that that goes better with that you know it's generally accepted you know rule really and despite that the person will say yeah but i prefer this one and they'll have a listen to something that's completely out of, off the wall you know say, oh no that sounds better to me and you think well does that sound better with that but no, you see, your head is part of the synergy. If it sounds better to you, it's better. It's as simple as that. There is no real ultimate better. That's why when you go around a hi-fi show, you know, as somebody said, it was a review I read, or was it something Derek Hughes said? If you take a CD around a hi-fi show and you go around each of the rooms, and each one is the ultimate truth. Oh, yeah. But you take a CD around and play the same track in every room, it'll sound completely different in every room. There is no ultimate truth. Okay? So, um, so enjoy the reviews. Okay? Enjoy them. Okay? But don't be led by them. Don't be led. All right? Okay? Don't, don't, don't lead your life by the reviews. Um, now, the next thing, number five. This is where we get to the double number six. It's just to confuse myself. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this simple one. Yeah, we're going to alternate between philosophical and physical don't let your speakers move people talk about expensive speaker stands and all this kind of stuff you think well why is that well, there's a number of different reasons but one of them look at this don't let this happen now why is that now this isn't perhaps the best example but i've set up this little this this is a stunt that i set up earlier i don't normally have any speakers doing this this is actually rocking sort of at 45 degrees. It's just on, it's on an uneven floor and I've fiddled about with the spikes and sabotaged it. Sometimes they rock, uh, let me just do this. Sort of, can you see this? Sort of, oh, I can't do it. Forwards and backwards like that, just like that. Now, what's the problem with that? Well, first of all, you're trying to generate some bass from this box, from whatever box you've got. 
And in a pistonic motion, you like that, the bass driver moves in and out, in and out, in and out. Now you imagine if you're, this is just one reason, this, this is my favourite, this is one for today. So you've got the bass driver moving in and out, in and out, moving some air that pushes that, that movement translates to your ears and your ears move. Simple as that. So it's moving in and out. And the cabinet is still rigid. So the bass driver is moving its optimum. Let's say it's moving one centimetre forwards, one back, one forward, one back. Right? This is an exaggeration, by the way. Now, if your box starts to move, okay, it's going to move in opposition to the bass driver. The bass driver is going to push itself out, and the cabinet's going to push itself back ever so fractionally. And then the bass driver is going to come the other way, and it's going to come back, and it's going to start moving in, in opposition or in sort of chaotic motion with the bass driver. And essentially, for every time it does that, moves in opposition, if this goes back half a centimetre, if this goes forward a centimetre, but this is going back half a centimetre at the same time, this is only going to come out effectively. It's only going to get half a centimetre nearer to you. This is very crude, right? But essentially, everything's going to be moving kind of in opposition to each other and cancelling itself out. The box won't move at the same speed as that. It won't keep up. So the, the variance of the inaccuracy will be variable. What am I on about? Right, but basically that's it. If your speaker isn't rigid, rigid, rigid on the stand, it just won't sound as good. It, because its function will be affected. It's simple physics. This is nothing to do with, this is nothing to do with witchcraft and snake oil that we spoke about earlier. Okay, get your speakers. It's like this one, the thing about, I've rubbed it off now, about the record deck and the speakers being on the same thing. Some things are just all about physics, vibration and where it goes and what it does. And it's pretty straightforward. So if you've got speakers on stands and you want to make an upgrade that possibly might benefit you more than going out and buying a new pair of speakers or some fancy snake oil cables, just check that you set up right. Check that you set up right. Uh, there's another, there's a whole video I could do about this, about setting stuff up right, but just check that the fundamentals Cover the basics and then worry about the little things afterwards because they can make a massive difference, right? So that was number five. Don't let your speakers move. Show demo brackets. There you go. Number six, part one. Do keep your records clean. Now, clean and clean are two different things. There's clean looking clean and there's clean being clean. Now, you may think it doesn't make any difference whatsoever if your record is microscopically clean and it might not have made any difference to you all your life when you've been playing your Led Zeppelin records to death and all the other stuff. And if you're just very utilitarian about how you play music and how you play records and you've got kind of a modest sort of a setup and for years you've just treated your records the same and you've never bothered about whether or not the, you know, you've never probably cleaned them in years, it kind of doesn't matter. You've got to care for something to make a difference, right? You've kind of got to care. So you've got to care enough. So for people who are attempting to keep the records clean and putting the little record duster on them each time they go around and things like that, for people who do think that they would like to do a better job of it, or it, it is well worth doing. Because whether you like it or not, um, I, I read a, and it's an interesting article uh, written by Shaw from 1956, which... So some things have never changed. This sounds, this reads so much like many new articles that I've read, where they did an extensive bit of research um, on uh, the groove wear that can occur and what type of wear occurs from having dust in grooves. And they weren't talking about visible dust. They were talking about microscopic particles of dust. And it was, fasc it was fascinating. They were talking about the heat that's generated at the tip of a stylus that was calculated. It was some phenomenal, I can't even remember it, lava style heat but because it's momentary on the surface of the record it doesn't just instantly melt its way through it um, they were talking about uh, the pressure that's exerted at the tip of the stylus that was phenomenal as well so there was the pressure there was the heat you know it was kind of these are these are figures with lots of zeros after them and then in amongst all this was the just the basic thing that um when in the presence of any dust any dust at all, tiny microscopic specks of dust, other matter, um, the amount of wear that is induced that is 
uh, takes place on the surface of the record and to the stylus as well. And if you've got an expensive stylus, this matters. It was magnified, it was, it was, it was multiplied by numerous times. It was a big figure. I wish I could remember it. And I'm, I have shared that article on our Facebook page. So if you go to the Phono Stage, Phono Stage Records, at Phono Stage Records Facebook page, you scroll down a bit, you'll see the link to that article. It's a fascinating read. But the, 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 up, the upshot of it is, is that an unclean record, um, it doesn't just like add 10%, you know, where's your stylus out 10% faster or where's your record out 10% faster or something like that or whatever. The, the figures were astonishing. You know, it was a huge difference. It was a massive difference to the amount of heat that's generated and the amount of wear that occurs. Um, just, again, this is just physics. These are... These are truths, you know, in, in the lands of not truths. I'm trying to leave out too many subjective opinions here. This one was just about physics. It had been studied. There was all kinds of things done. Everybody knows this. How much you care does matter, but I would invite you to keep your records clean. I would invite you to keep them clean so that your listening experience is as good as it can be from the record. Uh, you don't have to go mental with this, by the way. You don't have to go and buy yourself some kind of a you know, £2,000 record cleaning machine. I use the, the Spin Clean washer for a lot of quick washes for records. It's good for getting like actual grubby hand marks and stuff off records compared to um, some other record cleaners. And then it, maybe it's good then to, if you're really bothered to progress that to a different record cleaner afterwards. Um, but just not putting your fingers on the record, keep your KFC hands to yourself and just get one of those uh, carbon fiber brushes and just before each play, just gently rest it on, draw it towards the outside of the record, and that can be all it takes, make a huge difference, and everything will last years longer. So, now number six. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? What does that say? Ah, remember the law of diminishing returns, and it says, draw curve. <laughs> well, I don't think I need to draw a curve. I can just do it, I can do it with my fingers. Yeah, all right, okay. The law of diminishing returns. The difference between, uh, I'd say, a hi-fi system that costs £100 to £1,000, okay, is massive. The difference between £100 and £1,000 is tenfold, let's say, all right? The difference between £1,000 and £10,000, or even £100,000, will be less. The difference between £100,000 and £200,000 will be totally subjective and minuscule, in my opinion. In my opinion. The law of diminishing returns applies to so many different things in life that I cannot see how hi-fi equipment could be completely excluded from it. Okay? It's like... The more you spend, the higher up the tree you get, the smaller the differences become. Okay? So, and it becomes very fine out, very subjective. It becomes, at a certain point, it's down to as much aesthetics and bling value, you know, as it is about anything else. So, and I'm talking about quite, I'm talking about high levels here, you know, but it does get to where it matches the human perception as well. I think your ability to hear differences at the higher level, and there are some to be had, you know, um, I'm, I'm not talking at the, the, the very top end. Your ability to hear those, I think um, people who can hear the difference or care enough about the difference, that will also diminish as you get higher up. There'll be a higher percentage of people that cannot possibly see the need to spend £100,000 on a record player. So it is for a smaller amount, it's a smaller difference and it's for a smaller amount of people. But even at that, Diminishing returns still applies. They will still suffer from diminishing returns as much as anyone else, okay? So it becomes very much about personal taste and preference, wealth, wow factor, what you want the neighbours to see, all those other things, okay? So uh, the law of diminishing returns applies. So that means that if you are buying, and I'm, I'm going to revisit this as one of the later things. So if you're going to buy a kind of a budget system, it can be worth spending a bit extra, reaching a bit further, you know, to just get that, that much more out of it, if you can, 
because you know you probably will hear and benefit from the differences. Okay, so that was from six part two. Number seven. Ah, remember the age you'd have a lot to offer to. Okay, this is like the B and Q employment policy. So uh, yes, the age you'd have a lot to offer to. I spent uh, a lot of my younger years trawling through loot. Now I know you have loot. Uh, in the United States as well, or did have, because I remember on my first trip to New York and I was by myself and uh, I was looking for something to, uh, I wanted some, I was, I was looking to buy a, a, a guitar. I wanted to buy a Gibson Les Paul while I was in America, right? So I um, I went out and bought a copy of Lute, uh, which is exactly the same thing as I would have done if when I was here in Lancashire. So, and it was sort of yellow and it looked just the same. And I thought, yeah, it's great, isn't it? Something's never changed. And I felt kind of at home, it was cosy. Um, so, um, oh, but that was before the Facebook marketplace, the internet, all the groups, all the forums, all the other stuff. This was, got, I'm going back to the 90s here. So, um, yeah, so I used to get copies of Loot and me and my friends used to trawl through that and we used to obsess about, we used to look for hi-fi bargains. We'd find a pair of quad two amps, you know, some guy would be selling it for, I don't know, 200 quid or something, <laughs> something ridiculously cheap and you go there and he had, a, uh, I don't know, he had a Revox reel-to-reel -reel as well. He said, well, you can have this as well if you want it, 20 quid. So these are the kind of things that we used to do. We used to pick up all kinds of stuff and we used to get it home. We'd try and get it working or we'd set it up and try it different ways around. Some stuff we'd get repaired, some bits we'd try and fix up ourselves. And um, anyway, what was going on? Yeah, right. So and. We had a great time. We had a great listening experience. And I was listening to some great, I was listening to these Graham audio speakers all week this week. And I've been doing a couple of reviews of things. Um, and I got home last night and I put on a couple of tracks before uh, I started watching telly. Um, and last night, and I put on uh, the speakers I have set up at home are, oh, let's work this out. 89, 99, 20, 42 years old. Right. So I was listening. I was listening last night when I got home to a pair of 42-year-old speakers and they sounded absolutely gorgeous. And Rogers uh, LS35As, Chartwell LS35As, particularly I think the early ones, BBC LS speakers, you know, those type of things. So the original versions of some of these that you can see around. Well, I mean, they're just, these are old. They're old speakers. They're from the 70s, they're from the early 80s. Um, they just sound absolutely beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, so I went to a chap's house uh, only recently, two weeks ago, and he had a Garrard 401 set up with a Shaw cartridge and an SME arm, which is probably quite a typical setup. And it was from 19, I think, I think it was from 1973. And it sounded beautiful, right? Okay. So... It's great to go out and obsess over the new stuff and um, buy the latest thing and all that kind of thing. But don't don't discount the older stuff. The older generation has such a lot to offer. And I'm just going to point you to another channel here on YouTube. Uh, look up Stereo Review X. I'm not trying to draw people away from my ramblings. There is a chap on there. Does a channel called Stereo Review X, and he reviews older gear. He's got a really good ear for all this stuff. He's got years of experience behind him and he's very entertaining. So I would say watch that, okay? Don't forget about the old stuff. Uh, number eight, ah, remember the EQ of life. Remember the EQ of life. Now this is an interesting one. This is an observation that I've made as I've gone through. Something changes about what we like and what we perceive in the music and all that kind of stuff, blah, 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 as we get older. We change, we start with the smile, okay? The EQ of life. When we're younger, we have the smile. So what is it about being 19, 21, 22, whatever like that? Everybody wants more bass, more treble, nothing in the middle. Scooped, guitars, you know, heavy metal, crunchy 1980s guitar sounds, scooped, all right? Graphic equalizers on Technics Hi-Fi systems going back a few years when we were all younger, scooped. On your Sony MIDI system, scooped, the smile. And then as you get older, it starts to level out a little bit. And then you start obsessing about mid-range. You go, oh, the mid-range, the mid-range, the mid-range. 
voices, violins, pianos. Your tastes mature, mature. You start to like olives, you know, strong cheeses, single malt whiskies, and mid-range, okay? And the smile levels out. The smile levels out. So, um, and a couple of people have said to me, does it have bass and treble on it? I mean, it's great to have those things. And some of the Graham Audio speakers have filters and a couple of the amplifiers that I have have filters. You can make, you should make adjustments for, you know, you're not in the same room and you haven't got the same ears as the guy that made the music, the guy that sat behind the desk, the guy in the mastering studio. It's okay to make adjustments, you know, just because we're trying to go flat, you know, doesn't mean you can't make adjustments. You should be able to make adjustments. But the smile of life, you can forget about that. You know, you need to keep your mood even. Right, now then, turning over. Number nine, number nine. Never go for 100% because it doesn't exist. Now this, I think I've said something about this, isn't it? I've put here, I'm gonna try and read through some of this. I've put, this is like the universe. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking, but I've probably had a couple of drinks or something, I don't know, but um, this is like the universe. So you wouldn't set off across the universe just ho hoping that you were going to get to the perfect destination, right? Because it's inf inf infinitesimal, right? The chances of that happening are so impossible that you just end up drifting, disappointed that you haven't got to that perfect de destination yet. So... And the moral of this story is, is this is like the high, this is one of the hi-fi rules because it's the same. If you have in your head some sort of perfect destination and you set off on this journey to try and achieve this perfect destination, you're going to fail. You know, I think you're going to fail at least. And I'm, Because there isn't one. There isn't one. And if there is one, it's perceptual and it's momentary. Because as you go through life, like with the smile of life, what you want from your system will change. As you're traveling through the universe, the destination that you're aiming for will change. It doesn't really, it's not, not in any one fixed place. Your musical tastes will change and that will impact on the gear that you listen to it on. Your, yeah, your perception of what you think sounds good will change. Um, your domestic situation will change. Your financial situation will change and suddenly, you know, your ideal thing will become a different thing. Well, what's wrong with the old ideal thing? Just because you've got a few more quid, you know, but that's what happens. Um, your hearing will change. You know, once you, is it after the age of 50, you lose a kilohertz every, I hope it's not a kilohertz every year. No, but I have a feeling that it might be or something like that. Again, I've written about that. I've got the accurate version of that in one of our blog posts about golden ears. So you could look at that as well if you wanted. Um, so... If you set off thinking you're going towards this ideal perfect place, right, you've already, you know, you, you, it's not going to work. It's just not going to work because the ideal place is going to constantly change. And then even then the chances of finding it are slim. So you've got to go through it thinking, I'm going to have a lovely journey through the universe. I'm going to look at all the things that I see on the way. I'm going to have a great time. I'm going to see where I end up. You've got to be, uh, don't be destinationist about it, okay? Enjoy the road that you're on. Look around and enjoy where you are now. Don't be disappointed that what you've got now isn't this fictitious thing that you've got in your head. Enjoy what you've got now. So when I went home last night and I listened to whatever it was I was listening to, I enjoyed it now. So it will change in the future and it may become better. But it might not be the better, if it became better, now get this right, if it became better in the future, but I was transported through a wormhole to that place now, I might think, that does not sound better. That sounds shit. You know, this is like free jazz on a pair of micro speakers, you know, so it was just... <laughs> But I'm not going to be transported there through a wormhole. I'm going to get there through a process. I'll be older. I'll be in a different position in life. I'll have heard lots of different things that influence me. 
then when I get there it might sound better. But does that sort of get across to you what I'm trying to say? Enjoy the journey, don't be destinationist. And number 10, if you're not going to buy the best, if you can't buy the best, don't buy the worst, right? When I was younger, I used to try and fix cars or whatever, motorbikes that I used to have. And I used to go to the tool shop in town. I didn't go to like the fancy tool shop. I went to the cheap tool shop, you know, it's like full of sort of like, you know, those kind of green handled C3 plastic handle screwdrivers with chrome plating on that comes off and all that sort of thing. And the amount of times that I was frustrated in my efforts to fix something by a rubbish tool is just absolutely loads. The times, the socket set, just you try and get a bit of pressure on it, it slips, you know, it won't go, the ratchet fails, you know, it's cheap as chips. So time after time, and I realized then when I started buying better quality tools, and they weren't the best tools, but better quality tools, I just realized I was started building up a collection of tools. They were lasting longer and I was actually being able to fix things. So um, it's the same with many things, you know, it's, it doesn't cost that much more to buy something that's good enough to do the job and last a bit of time. You don't have to get the best of everything. You don't have to go out and buy snap on everything, uh, which is, although it's not very nice. So um, if, you, if you can't afford to, or you're not inclined to, or you don't see the justification of going out and buying the best of everything, okay, don't buy the worst because it will not last and your satisfaction that you get from it will be so low, you might never go back to hi-fi. You might miss out on all those learning experiences that you could have and, and listening experiences for the rest of your life. You could really just spoil it for yourself early on. If you're going to go out and buy a system or if you want to change something on your system, as I said, with the law of diminishing returns, it is worth stretching just that little bit further and getting something a little bit nicer, right? So there's 10 rules there. I should have written them all down on the board, but you know, I just, I don't want to get rid of that because it's very nice. And I was going to spin the board around, but uh, because it's kind of uh, almost Christmas, we've sort of like, I don't know, put stuff all over it. So I can't spin the board around. But there you go, there's my 10 rules. I hope that uh, that is gonna help you, made some difference to you, help you to reflect on things a little bit. And all I really want it to do is help you to get the best of your listening experience, have more satisfaction, don't be dissatisfied, okay? Um, and buy carefully. And thank you very much, everyone. Tune in for the next exciting episode. Probably gonna be back on with the reviews and um, just, like and subscribe and you get notified by subscribing you'll find out what it is that we're going to put up next thank you very much bye